Once again, we're here with Alexi, Mermaid Star, and we are working with the latex to start another scale mold, I believe. Is that correct? Scale cast. Scale cast. Sorry. Um, Terminology is not my thing. I mix it. Ah. So, um, we want to make our orange latex. So, I have my white, which is my five pound bucket. We've used quite a bit of it. Um, it's a about two and a half gallon ish. Um, and we're going to, last time I made it to this line when I felt it. So um, we are going to fill up the latex up to this line, add three squirts of orange, and that should get us back to around the same color we had uh, on the other scale. All right. Trying. This is kind of hard to do myself, but uh, I'll try. Well, here I can actually help and hold this camera. I'll hold this. Uh, last time was a lot easier because it was more full. If you so grab the handle. Point, uh, at, if I, at this point it was a lot uh, higher, so I was able to pour it. I just lift it. All right. Now I can't see it very well. I can, and we're there. Alright. Now, when before I started videotaping, you had mentioned something uh, when it came to latex. Um, and that we had to clean this bucket here because there was still some residual inside. Would you suggest doing that any time you do something like this? Well, you don't really want lumps in your latex which old dried out latex is going to cause lumps. Um, so just to make it smooth, I would personally suggest to take them out. Um, I like to start clean. Uh, some of the areas still have a little bit on it, like up here, but they're really stuck on. They're not going to come off. So, well, currently, unless I really rub on them, and I don't plan to. So um, since it was below the line, we didn't worry about it as much. Or, I'm sorry, above the line. Um, oh, here's something. See that? Latex on the clothes. Don't touch it. Let it dry. Because if you let it dry, it will not rub into the fibers themselves, and you can just peel it off your clothes. If you rub it in, it's not going to come off. And when it gets on your skin, like your arm there? You can just rub that. It'll come right off. Not getting it into your wet latex, though. It's kind of like Elmer's glue in that method. Yeah. So don't touch it if it's on your clothes. Alright, so we're at our line, or slightly above it. Yeah, uh, just barely above it. Um, so, if it was just under that line or at that line, I'd do three squares. I'm still going to do three squares, but maybe a little bit longer. So I'm going to just do one, two, and three. And that should get me to right about where I am. Uh, we are still using the pearl latex in tangerine for this. Uh, it actually is pretty shiny mm -hmm. if you're just painting with it. See that? Mm -hmm. It's actually a pretty nice color. It's unfortunately not going to come out this shiny because it's mixed in with a white latex. It's going to make it a lot more dull. Um, but when we paint with it, it will end up being that nice bright color because we're going to add it and mix it in with uh, a clear latex. And this is what you're doing uh, just for the base. This is to help in coloring so you don't have to paint as much, correct? Right. And also, if, um, if when we're painting um, or if when I'm swimming around and the paint scuffs, then it'll still be orange underneath, not a standard white. It'll be a lot less obvious that I've scratched my tail. Um, but yeah, even then, you can see how shiny and glittery mm -hmm. it is in my hand. Right. So we're going to go ahead and mix her up. You know, she looks, now remember, the scales dry dark, so it's going to be darker than what it seems, or it's going to look lighter than what it's actually going to be. And would you suggest go one by two for mixing normally, or is this just what you had at hand? This is kind of what I had at hand. I thought I originally had mixed with two squirts, I thought, you know, it's, I don't like the color as much. I think I'm going to go one more, and it actually ended up a lot darker than I had anticipated, but... It's not that bad, actually. It, it works very well with the color. Um, I was actually talking about this. Oh, thing, this? The one by two. Oh, 
Uh, this is just anything I had. I was looking actually for um, a dipstick of some sort, like a paint stick, but I didn't have it, and I couldn't find them at the store. <laughs> Mental note, Home Depot for that, by the way. Yeah. Well, actually, I had gone... If you're looking for those, they're at Home Depot. <laughs> I had gone into the store, and I still couldn't find them. I was in the paint section. I didn't see them, um, or I didn't look for them, and then I went somewhere else. I think I went to uh, a craft store. They definitely didn't have them. Um, and Big Lots, unfortunately, didn't have them either. Uh, this looks a little too light. So I'm going to add a little more. I'm sorry. There we go. From what I remember it looking like. I did take a picture of it to make sure I could match it up. And go check it later. Make sure it's right before we pour it. It kind of looks like tomato soup. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going for like a creamsicle color <laughs> at first. Yeah, um, it's kind of there. We're about too. a creamsicle, so I think uh, I think we're in the right spot. So we can stop mixing uh, as soon as we see all the extra colors gone, which looks pretty well gone. No white streaks, no big bright orangey streaks. And um, let it settle a little bit because you have all those bubbles that are now starting to appear. So you don't want that in your casting as much as possible. So uh, we're going to let it rest for a little bit and we can start painting it into the All right. Well, see you in a few then.